everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Sylvan Candle Company. Today I'm bringing you another candle making tutorial video. You might have seen my other tutorial where I showed you how to make a candle using a 16 ounce straight sided glass jar from Uline. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make a candle in the Uline 8 ounce straight sided glass jar container. And I'm going to try to also address some of those really common questions I get about using the wax choice that we're going to be using today and how much fragrance to add and what type of wick to use. So I'm going to try to give you a beginning, uh, from beginning to end, step-by-step -step tutorial using the 8 ounce straight sided container. If you want a full written tutorial and written recipe, you can head on over to my Patreon campaign and unlock that for a $5 pledge. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to talk to you about today is the wick choice. So you need to choose a wick that's appropriate for your container. And the way that you go about doing that is you always measure the diameter. Now this is not always the case, but this is how you start to test. And in this case, it works perfectly because I've made these candles lots and lots of times. So you are going to measure the inside diameter of the candle and they are right about two and a half, a little less than two and a half inches in diameter across. And so the wick choice that we're using today is the CD7. CD7 wick we're using based on the diameter of the jar and also our wax choice that I'll be getting to in just a minute. And we are gonna be hot gluing the wicks down to the center of the jar. Um, I get questions about the hot glue a lot you do not have to hot glue. You can buy wick stickers that just are little at pieces of adhesive to stick to the bottom of the wick and put it down. Um, I don't have any wick stickers and, and actually I do hot glue my wicks down a lot. So if you're gonna be hot gluing, what you need to know is you wanna use a high heat glue gun. I get this question a lot, so I thought I would address that today. Um, I'm using a high heat glue gun from Joanne and the glue sticks that go with it are made for high heat. And the reason I'm doing that is because you need that high heat in order for these wicks to stick and stay stuck to the glass during the whole candle burn. So we're gonna go ahead and glue these wicks down to the middle of our containers. I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. Having a pencil with an eraser handy is a good idea. I'm just putting a little glue and then these jars have a number on the bottom of them so that's how I know that I'm pretty close to center then I'm just going to take my pencil and kind of push down and make sure that it's exactly where I want it and stuck down all right and we're going to go ahead and do that with the rest of these jars and all of my candle jars, it is time to go ahead and cut up and prepare the wax. Now I am using Joy Wax from Nature's Garden. You guys have seen me use this wax a lot. Um, this is one of my hands down favorite waxes to use. It is a soy and paraffin blend. It holds scent really well. It holds color really well. It has a very nice hot throw. It's just all around a very easy, user-friendly wax. So the only downfall is you have to cut it up into pieces, but um, to me, it's worth cutting it up into pieces because I really love this wax. So we're gonna cut this up and then I'm gonna put it into this roasting pot here. So this roasting pot, um, we've put a spigot on the end of it and I can link the video where I found this idea. You can make this yourself. We got this idea from Stanley Handcrafted and I'll go ahead and link that video in the description box. So if you wanna make one of these yourself, you can. But this is just the roasting pot. I get asked this question a lot too. This is just the Presto roasting pot. 
it's the bigger size. I can't remember exactly what size it is, but there's two different sizes. This is the bigger size. It's got a temperature gauge on the side when it's plugged in and we just made a spigot on it. So we're gonna go ahead and chop up the Joy Wax and we're gonna put it into our roasting pot. I already have some Joy Wax in here from another project I did a few days ago. is all chopped up and in the roasting pot we're going to go ahead and turn the temperature gauge on to 200 degrees this wax the manufacturer's directions say to heat this up to 200 degrees before you do anything else so that's what we're going to do we're going to warm it to 200 degrees and i get a lot of questions about wax choice in general so i just wanted to address that for a minute this particular wax is made just for containers it's designed to adhere to glass containers or any type of container that you're pouring it into this is not made for wax melts or for pillar type candles where you would pour it into a mold and pop it out. It's too soft for that and so um, it's just designed specifically for containers. All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn it on to 200 degrees and we're going to go ahead and just let that be until we're all melted down. Now that this wax is all the way melted down to 200 degrees, I'm going to lower the temperature to under that, under the 200 degree range. We don't want it sitting too hot for too long. It could actually discolor your wax. So I'm going to turn it down um, about into the warm range. So this will take a while to cool off to where we need it to be. I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to show you what we're doing with our containers. Very carefully set this aside. And we're going to do a little bit more um, prep work with our containers before we get our wax ready. So what we're doing with these is we're going to get the wick in place. So we're using these little wick bars. Um, you can get these at Sierra Candles or Candle Science or um, those are the places that I've seen them the most. And they just have a little slot right there and you're going to fix your wick into it and then you're just going to center it. So that will keep your wick in place. The whole time the candle is curing. ahead and weigh out your wax. Now I have prepped 24 8 ounce candles over here but I'm actually only going to be filling 12 candles for purposes of this video. I'm going to be doing the rest in a different fragrance off camera. So I'm going to be giving you a 12 to 14 
um, eight ounce candle recipe. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh out six pounds of Joy Wax into this container. Now this is just a container I got from a local food supply store in my area called Smart and Final. Um, it's very heavy duty, durable plastic. It can withstand high heat. It's got the recycle number five on it, so it can also withstand fragrance oils and all of that. You wanna make sure it's got the recycle number five on the bottom if you're using um, containers like mine. So we're gonna just go ahead and put it on the scale. Also, my scale is just um, a digital scale I also got from the food supply store. It's a Taylor brand. So I get questions about that quite a bit. So I'm gonna put this on here and just tear out my scale. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna open a spigot and I'm just gonna start getting the wax into here and then I'm gonna transfer it into this container and start weighing off my six pounds. So then we're just gonna pour it into here and start weighing off our wax. That's about half, three pounds. So of course you could do this in smaller quantities. You could just do, you know, a two pound. I'm just gonna give you ratios for the six pounds and then you can, um, you can up the batch or reduce the batch depending on your liking. Okay, and there's our six pounds of melted wax. I'm gonna pour the rest of this in here because we're gonna be reusing this melt pot in just a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my wax out of the way. And then the next thing I'm gonna be doing is adding color to this wax. So you guys know I really like the Sierra candles. Um, liquid candle colorants, they're super easy to use and they're very concentrated. A little bit goes a long way. You definitely cannot use um, more than what is recommended or your candle may not burn properly. So they recommend, you know, one drop per pound is probably good for a light color. You don't want to exceed uh, much more than that. So I'm going to do three drops per pound. So that will give me 18 drops of, I'm using Kelly Green. I'm gonna give that a good stir. Of course, it looks super dark green right now, but it's not gonna cure this color. It's gonna cure a much lighter green because this is a white wax. So it is gonna cure very opaque and light. We're gonna get probably a color that looks more like what you see on the edge here of my white spatula. Probably even a little lighter than that. Okay, and then I'm gonna set that aside and weigh out my fragrance oil. So for this recipe, we are gonna be using the beautiful fragrance called Santa Spruce. You guys have seen me use this lots of times in soap. It is my most favorite Christmas fragrance of all. Um, it smells like pine trees, spruce trees, and um, kind of like sugar plum. It's just really a unique smell. And if you have a fake Christmas tree or you know anyone that has a fake Christmas tree, it's a really nice Christmas tree smell. So for this recipe, for the six pounds of wax, we are gonna be using 9.6 ounces of fragrance. We're using this at a 10% fragrance load. So what that means is if you scale this recipe down or up, you can multiply your batch by 10% and that will give you how much fragrance oil you need. Okay, this is not going to be enough. I need a bigger container. too much. 
much there. I just absolutely adore this fragrance. It is so Christmassy, so festive, and it's not like your regular pine fragrance where you get kind of that pungent, like um, floor cleaner type of smell. No, this is really kind of a mellowed out, sweeter pine, just a beautiful fragrance. Okay, so then I need to take the temperature here on my wax. Um, the manufacturer says to add the fragrance to this wax when the wax is around 170 um, to like 176 ish degrees but we can vary from that in certain situations so this is sitting at 169 degrees 170 degrees fahrenheit and the flash point on this i'm not going to go too much into detail on this because if you're a beginning candle maker this can be kind of confusing but the flash point on this fragrance is low. It's about 150. So we, this, it's okay to be a little bit below. Um, if this was a fragrance with a higher flash point, then the wax can be a little bit hotter when you add it in. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and add in our fragrance oil now. I'm gonna take one more little temperature read here. So 168. And this is just a digital read thermometer that I got from Lowe's. A lot of people ask me about that too. Where did you get that thermometer? Okay, so pouring in all the fragrance. And then I'm gonna give it a good stir. Um, this is really important. You wanna kind of scrape the sides of your container and just stir it really, really well because you want the fragrance to combine and all the molecules of the fragrance and the wax to combine really well before you pour so that you're getting a really good hot throw when you're ready to burn your candle. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick temperature read again just to see where we are. Okay, we're sitting at around 160, which is perfect for pouring. And so we are gonna go ahead and get this ready for pouring. Um, pour temperature is pretty important for glass adhesion. So we are following the manufacturer's directions pretty closely on this so that we get good glass adhesion and we don't get any of those little air pockets or wet spots that I get asked about those a lot as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this a little bit back into my pour pitcher here because this is gonna not gonna be a good pouring container, but we're gonna kind of bend it like this so then making a little bit of a spout and I'm gonna pour a manageable amount into my container for pouring. Okay. Now I'm gonna stop probably about right there as I'm making a mess. Wipe that up. Okay, and now we're ready to pour. All right, we're ready to go ahead and pour. A couple things about pouring. You wanna just make sure your wick is center. So give this another um, look before you pour. Just make sure your wicks are center. And then when you pour, you don't wanna to pour too fast and you don't wanna to pour too slow because that also has to do with glass adhesion and you don't wanna pour right on the wick. You wanna pour in between the wick and the glass in a nice even motion no stopping and starting and we're just pouring right up to that lip
This recipe fills up 14 U-line jars, the eight ounce U-line jars completely, and one almost all the way filled up. So there's a 15th candle here that needs about 5% more wax. You could just keep that for home use. Um, the rest of them, they're perfect Christmas gifts. You can gift them to your family and friends and they'll be so impressed. You can sell them. They make a wonderful candle and I love this smell. So after these cure, I'll be right back to show you how I package and label these and then I'll show you how well they burn. Be right back. All right, now off to show you how I label these. All right, I'm using a clear laser print label from Online Labels, and you have seen me use before the inkjet ones of this same type. So the clear, they do have these in inkjet if you don't have a laser printer, which I used to use all the time, but I did get a laser printer, so now I print these out on my laser printer with the laser label. And I'll link in the description box exactly what size this is because they fit the eight ounce containers perfectly. So if you want to order yourself some, you can. They have all different colors, types of labels. Um, they have craft paper color. They have waterproof. They have all different kinds you can choose from. Um, for this candle, I'm using the clear one. And once you purchase labels from them, um, you will get access to their design software. So I just import my logo into the design software and I create my own labels using their software. So that is how I do it. And we're just gonna go ahead and label the candle. My candle just has the name of the candle, which we're calling this one Christmas Spirit. Has the name of the candle, how many ounces it is. And then on the sides, I have my website and on this side, I have my social medias. So that's how I do my labels. There you go. And then the last thing you need to do is don't forget your warning label. So I think I picked these up at Candle Science and they also come with white you can do this with a white label. This one just happens to be craft colored. Um, if you're selling your candles, they do need to come with a warning label on the bottom. You can pick those up at any candle supply store. So that's how you make the eight ounce candle and I'm gonna leave you with a time-lapse video of how these burn. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. Catch you on the next video.